Good morning, and what a beautiful day it is to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Then again, any day should be a good day for us to be in the house of the Lord. We are blessed. We can worship in sincerity and freedom without worry of persecution. We may be persecuted here in America through words, but words are nothing compared to bullets and knives and machetes. They're a little bit more dangerous. And there are people in other third world countries, and maybe not even third world countries, that don't get to worship God and the freedom that we do. Because someone might bust into the back of the church. The government might, might come in and kill them all. Not just words, but literal death. We have freedom today to worship in sincerity and truth. And may we take advantage of it. We've been looking at the Christmas story. And before I keep going, Brother Eli, would you collect the offering, please? <coughs> and before I get on too much of a roll, um, just uh, by way of announcement, there is a card out there at the feet of Joseph. I know we're supposed to lay everything at the feet of Jesus, but there was not enough room on Jesus' little table out there. So it's at the feet of Joseph. There's a card for everyone to sign for the pastor and Sister Holly and their family to show how much we appreciate them. And we'll present that tonight with the love offering. So if anybody wants to give towards that love offering, I'll go ahead and collect that up and give, them a, give it to them tonight and present it during Blacklight as usual. It's not going to be a surprise for them. I mean, we do it every year. Surprise is one time. When you do it about 50 million times, obviously it's not going to be a surprise anymore. But the other thing I've been telling you is I realize it's last minute. If you don't have the money throughout the year, just give, give them a Pentecostal handshake whenever you get it. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. And with all that being said, we are going to start looking at the Nativity again. Shocker. It's Christmas season. I know. But we looked at Mary. We looked at her origins, where she came from, what was her history, what was her background. We did an in-depth, so uh, quote-unquote, in-depth analysis on who was Mary. What was she? Where was she from? Who were her parents? So forth. Her background. Kind of a criminal investigation so that we may better understand who she is or who she was. Also, we looked at lessons from Mary because throughout we look, the Word of God, we can look, we can find lessons in everything. We can find lessons in bad people on what not to do if we really looked hard enough. But we saw that she was submissive to the will of God regardless of the consequences. And the consequences for her would have been punishable by death. Does everybody have notes on Joseph? They were handed out last week. So as we look at Joseph today, we're going to do an in-depth analysis on Joseph like we did with Mary. Who was he? Where was he from? What did he do? Who were his parents? Well, when we look at the parents of Jesus, Obviously, Mary was the most prominent. But scripture focuses on her more than Joseph because obviously she was more involved in the um, conception and the childbearing process. And also we talk about the absence of Joseph from even being mentioned in the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. When we look at Jesus' other parent, his name is given in scripture. And I know it's going to come as a shocker that his name was. Maybe it will come as a shocker. <laughs> well, in case you didn't know, Jesus' other parents, his father, our father's <coughs> name, was Joseph. We find that in Matthew chapter 1, 16, verse 18 and 20 as well, Luke 1, 27, Luke 3, and verse 23. When we look at the name, meaning of his name, it means increase, addition, and remover. <clears throat> if we are going to base the birth of Je Joseph on scripture, can we do it? We cannot base and try and figure out the birth date of Joseph throughout scripture. It's not given. We trace Mary Mary's birthday, because of the fact that she was betrothed, we can look at the betrothal age for that time period and take a guesstimation. 
I didn't say it was an exact date, I said it was a guesstimation. We can also take into consideration the taxation given by Caesar Augustus. But with Joseph, we have nothing to compare it to. So we do not know the birth date of Joseph. We do know where, he was, where his birthplace was. We find that in Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. If someone would please read Luke 1, 26 and 27. And someone else, Luke chapter 2, and we're going to be looking at 4, <coughs> verse 39. Verse 4 and 39 in Luke 2. Am I blowing anybody out with the microphone? Are we all good? Okay. I got a loud voice, I know. But just double checking. So does anyone have Luke chapter 1, verse 26? And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to the city of Galilee named Nazareth. So where was the angel Gabriel sent to? What town? What city? And Nazareth. And what about Luke chapter 2, verse 4 and 39? Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, and the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was in the house of the lineage of David. 39 or 49? 39. So when we're looking at Joseph here in Luke chapter 2, we're looking at the taxation where they had to go back to the origin of their family ancestry, which was in Bethlehem. <coughs> and they left, the Bible states, Nazareth to travel to, to, to Bethlehem. And it also states in verse thir um, 39 that when, they were when the taxation was over, they traveled back from whence they came Nazareth. So Joseph was from Nazareth. And we want to figure out his nationality. What is his nationality? He was a Jew. He was an Israeli. And when we look at his wealth status, his social status, was he rich? Was he well to do? Was he he was poor? We looked at I, I'm just trying to see. We don't have that in our notes, but do you remember how we concluded that Mary was poor? Through her offering. Who was there when she offered up that offering, though? Joseph. That indicated that their social status, <coughs> and it was that offering of a poor individual, someone who did not have a lot of money. <coughs> When we look at when we're looking at the death date of Joseph, we can try to conclude that using scripture. And that's where we come up with this date that he possibly died around 8 AD and 30 AD. How do we conclude to such a date? Well, using scripture, when is the last time that we see Joseph a lot? You saw Joseph alive when Jesus was twelve? I've never seen Joseph. Yes, we see Joseph or see in the scriptures, reading the scriptures, that the last time that Joseph was alive, physically breathing, Jesus was 12. So what we're basing this upon is the rough birth date of Jesus, which is around 4 to 6 B.C. to the age of 12, which would put us right around 8 A.D. And is there any mention of Jesus from the age of 12 to his earthly ministry? No. No. Before Jesus be really officially begins his ministry, where was his first miracle performed? Why wedding? At the wedding in Cana. Turn water into wine. <coughs> exactly. 
why did he do that? I always ask why he did that. And people are all, and then these people are start drinking. And now everybody thinks alcohol is sociable and alcoholics. You know, like I was an alcoholic 14 years ago. But it was more when it was hard to break. I know your post only drink sociable, but I often question that. Why did he create a narcotic? He didn't. When you study it out, he created grape juice. It was not fermented. Oh, what it is was it? grape juice. Oh, well, so it wasn't alcohol as we think of it. It wasn't wine as we think oh. of it. It was a grape juice. That is why we use grape juice at communion. I didn't know that. So, but when we look at the wedding at Cana, what relatives are present with Jesus? His mom, and if we trace it down, some of his um, fellow, dis fellow disciple, disciples, which were also step cousins or whatever. But when we're looking at his parents, his mom was there, but where's his, is his dad mentioned? Why isn't his dad mentioned? And when we look at the earthly, and let's just go out on a limb run. Let's just say he's homesick with, with um, pneumonia or something, or he has the common cold, and he's homesick. Do we see Joseph anywhere else in the ministry of Jesus Christ being mentioned? No. So the absence of Joseph, <laughs> Joseph leaves us with the impression that he passed away between the age of 12, of, between Christ being the age of 12, and his earthly ministry, which began at what age? Around 30. So there with that gap, there's no mention of Joseph. So we can conclude basing in all upon scripture that Joseph possibly died between 8 AD and 30 AD. We cannot narrow it down any farther because, first of all, scripture is absent on it. It's silent. We don't know. But what we do know is he was there at the age of 12, but gone at the age of 30. So we can base the death date on Joseph around 8 AD to 30 AD. And even if we would try to look at commentaries, try to look at historical records to see if there's anything stating when Joseph died, there's so much uncertainty you can't pin it down to a certain date. So what can we do as Christians? In our study on the Word of God, the best we can conclude is that Joseph died somewhere between 8 AD and 30 AD, all based upon the fact that he was present at Jesus, being with Jesus at the age of 12, but he was absent at the age of 30 of Christ. And if we were going to take a conclusion, where might Joseph be buried? If we had to guess. In his hometown, which was? Nazareth. In Nazareth. Once again, there's nothing scripturally, there's nothing historically that we can basically state that Joseph was buried here, or in this location. But, more than likely, if you grew up in this area, you've lived here your entire life, where are you going to be buried? Not off in Ohio. <laughs> Not off, probably in mechanics work, but you're going to be buried here. If this is where you've lived your entire life, you're going to be buried here, more than likely. So we can guess at the burial place of uh, Joseph, but once again, with that one, no one knows. There's no documentation. Scripture is silent on it. <coughs> and when it comes down to our salvation, it really doesn't matter. It's just us trying to better understand the Word of God. Get a better understanding of the time frame. Better understanding of the life of Christ. Justin, while you're talking about burning, uh, do, you, do you believe that Christ uh, is okay with getting cremated? I heard a service the other week on uh, the 700 Club about, he said in Isaiah something, I didn't get the scripture. But does it say anywhere in the Bible about Jesus against cremation? You know, I, at this know point, Bible, I I'll be honest, with that topic right now, that's one I'm stepping back from because there's strong debate on that one in the Christian realm. Some will say absolutely not. And it's just slipping my mind right now on the reason for it. And others will say that it's all right. But so, you got to so, think about so, this too. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I can't remember the verse that they use. I really can't. The body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I know that's a uh, overall one, but there's another one that they go into more detail. It says that all, all the bones and all the stuff would 
And it will be, brother. And that's why I'm kind of saying, wait, A, I can't remember the main verse that they used to begin with for the argument. Yeah, but back to his statement, yes, if you don't get embalming fluid, your body will go back to dust. But that don't mean that you're torched. You know, you're put in a furnace and your body is burnt. Absolutely that's, not. See, that's what I, that's what I have an issue with. I don't believe it. That's what I'm saying. I believe it needs to be buried and that's it. And that's fine. But, but the thing is, too, is you got to keep in mind what happened to all those people on 9 11. You can't say they're going to hell. Right. They got annihilated. I mean, to limit God, and that's fine. If you want to believe that way, I'm not getting into that can of worms. But like I said, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But the thing is, God is still supernatural. He's all powerful. It doesn't matter if there's nothing left, there's still fragments. And on the rapture day, on judgment day, whichever it is, all those pieces are going to come right back together. I mean, Christ don't want you to go to hell and be uh, burnt or burn and brimstone in your, your eternity. Uh, why would you put a loved one in and have their body torched? Well, see, that's it. Uh, it's just something I've been trying to research and I can't get an answer. Yeah. You know and at I mean? this point in time, I'll just have to say that. Uh, that person is responsible for God, whatever happens at that point is, and then okay. we'll just let it be there so we can move on today. But I don't really have an answer for you. Like I said, that is speculation. I shouldn't say speculation, but there's a lot of debate and as a fuzzy area. Commentaries, try to look at historical records. 
It is all over the place. The Catholics believe that Joseph was 90 when he married uh, uh, Mary. But when it gets down to it, no one knows. Scripture is silent. The historical records are silent to the best of my knowledge. No one knows when he, at what age he was, bet was betrothed to Mary. We do know that he had famous descendants, though. Some that we would recognize by name. And we're not going to look at all the scripture verses, but they're listed right there in the genealogy of Matthew, chapter 1. Boaz, we all know him from the account with Ruth. Obed, we know that he was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. David's son, Solomon. And then we know Roboam from Roboam and Jeroboam. So that he had famous descendants. He was from the lineage of David. And his genealogy is listed in Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. And what places do you think that Joseph lived during his lifetime? He lived in Nazareth. Where else would he have lived? Eh, not Bethlehem. They went there for taxation. But if we think about the Christmas account, where did Mary and Joseph live for a little while? Jerusalem. Egypt. They went to Egypt. Egypt, that's right. So, and we know that they spent a few years there. So we know, based upon Scripture, that Joseph would have lived in Nazareth and Egypt for sure. Now, when we look at Joseph, we're again just going to go back and quickly review uh, what we've already talked about here. It is mentioned that it is possible that his birthday is neglected, not just from Scripture, but historical records, because once again, who is Joseph in his time frame? Was he the Donald Trump of his time frame, who's constantly on there going, location, location, location? You got to buy up this manger, buy up that stable. Was he some great Nazareth talk show host? Was he some great politician? What? Was he a governor? He was a carpenter. And where was the carpenter status in that time frame? Way down here. So why isn't Joseph's birthday mentioned? Probably because when it comes to him as, I hate to say a human being, but as a man in his time frame, there was no importance for it. He wasn't Caesar Augustus. He wasn't King Herod. He wasn't Cyrenius, who was governor of Syria. He was a lowly carpenter. There was no significance really about him. And there was really no reason to record his birthday. He wasn't wealthy. He came from a poor family. So there would have been no need to have recorded his birthday. Now when we get into Joseph, what would he probably have looked like? And don't cheat and look in the back because you'll be wrong. That one back there looks like he went through a little bit of plastic surgery for a little bit. But if we had to guess, what would Joseph have physically looked like? Tall, beard, slim. Slim? What other features might he have? What color would have been in his skin? Yellow, tan. It would have been more like a brownish, brownish. an olive -ish. An olive color, a tan. Oh. And the reason being is, you look at a Jew today, they're not white. It doesn't matter what our ministry <coughs> looks like back there. Jesus wasn't white. When we went into a black church. Jesus wasn't black. Joseph wasn't black. But rather, he would have had an olive skin. He probably would have had brown hair. And it probably would have been a bowl haircut style like you see with the Amish. It might have even been curly. His eyes would have been either green or brown, possibly. Might have been bald, too. What's that? Might have been bald, too. He might have been bald, too, brother. 
They might have, brother, but don't go making fun of us bald people. He probably would have had a fat, crooked nose, and he probably would have been around five foot one inches tall. So he wouldn't have been tall at all. And what are we basing that off of? Because Joseph, Mary, and Jesus would have looked no different than any common Jew you saw today. Jews are mainly, mainly tall, and I see. What's that? Jews are mainly tall. Uh, they're shorter. They're on the shorter side. I think your average, when I was compiling my notes, I'm sure I was basing upon the average um, height of a Jew. Well, yeah. And maybe I have to look. They say that Jacob was small. And Jacob was small too. So you never know. Bible says we're grafted. And when we look at the betrothal period itself and um, the ceremony, we know that he would betroth to a girl um, named Mary, probably between the ages of 15 and 12. No one knows how old Joseph was during this time. Many people speculate that he was probably around the age of 20 based on the assumption that a boy could be betrothed at the age of 12, but he had to po possess enough finances paid for the dowry for the girl, to the girl's father. So it wasn't just a matter of going out like a caveman saying, I like her, and bopping her over the head and dragging her home to dad. No, there was a price to be paid. You had to pay the dowry. And at the age of 12, they're assuming he did from the fact that he wasn't from a wealthy family, he probably didn't have the means or the money right away, so it probably took him some time to save up some money to buy his bride. So you're saying back in Christ's time, they had to buy their bride, their, their girlfriend or wife? They had to pay a dowry to the father. Well, yes. what's, your, what's your definition of dowry? Dowry is, um, there was a certain price that had to be paid to the father for that dog. That's not a sacrifice. Well, you you're had to work talking for about money. They still do it in India today, except for it's reverse. The women actually have to pay the dowry to get the guy. <laughs> but he had to save up to buy Mary. And he had to possess the finances to do it. And it wasn't just that, but we tie that in with the verse where Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions, that goes right along with the betrothal period. The Jewish male would pay the dowry. They would have the betrothal period uh, ceremony in place, but then he would go back to his father's house and build an additional room onto that house for him and his bride. So Joseph had to be able to save up for the dowry, and yet be able to go home and have enough money to build a, house, a room onto his father's house for his bride, for him and his bride. When we look at this betrothal period, it was a waiting time because the bride did not know when the husband was going to return for her. There was a waiting period. It was roughly about nine months. We see that in scripture. It ties right in with us. We do not know the day and the hour in which Christ will return to the church. For his church, same way with the Jewish woman who is in the betrothal period. She did not know the day or the time when her husband would return for her. So he had to go home, prepare the place. And it's during this time that we know that he gets news and a dream that Mary's pregnant. And the angel explains the whole situation. Now when we move on to the birth of Jesus Christ, we know that that time frame, during that time, that Joseph and Mary had to travel to Bethlehem for the time of taxation. Because it was a command given by the governor Cyrenes. He wanted to take up, tax the families and take a census. We base this between the time frame of 6 and 4 BC, based upon Luke verse, uh, chapter 2. And chapter uh, verses one and two. 